China's sudden relaxation of its COVID restrictions has caused a surge in infections and deaths, posing a health risk and uncertainty for foreign businesses and workers. In this section, we will explore how China's policy shift has changed the COVID landscape in the world's second largest economy and what it means for global trade and investment. China had been following a zero COVID strategy for three years, imposing strict lockdowns, mass testing, and quarantine measures to prevent any outbreaks. This approach kept infections and deaths comparatively low among the population of 1.4 billion, but also hampered economic activity and social life. In December 2022, China decided to end its zero COVID policy and reopen its borders to international travelers. The move was seen as a sign of confidence in China's ability to cope with the pandemic and a desire to boost its tourism and trade sectors. However, the relaxation of the rules also unleashed a wave of COVID cases across the country, fueled by the highly contagious Omicron variant. China reported more than 100,000 new infections per day in January 2023, surpassing its previous peak of 15,000 in February hospitals were overwhelmed with patients, crematories were flooded with bodies, and a wave of top scholars died. China's official COVID death toll for the entire pandemic remained strikingly low. 83,150 people as of February. But many researchers believe that this number is a vast undercount, in part because it only includes infected people who died in hospitals, excluding anyone who died at home. Based on different methods of estimation, epidemiologists have suggested that China's COVID wave may have killed between a million and 1.5 million people. One reason for the high mortality rate is that China has a low level of immunity among its population, due to its previous zero COVID strategy and its slow vaccination campaign. Only about 60% of China's population is fully vaccinated, compared with more than 80% in many Western countries. Moreover, most of China's vaccines are based on older technology that offers less protection against Omicron than newer ones. Another reason is that China has changed its definition of COVID deaths, which will drastically cut its death statistics as cases increase. According to the new guidelines, only fatalities caused by pneumonia and respiratory failure in patients who had the virus are classified as COVID deaths. Deaths caused by other diseases such as cardiovascular or cerebrovascular diseases and heart attacks are not counted as COVID deaths, even if they were triggered by the virus. The change in definition is at odds with World Health Organization guidance, which says many countries now use excess mortality as a more accurate measure of the true impact of the pandemic. Excess mortality is defined as the difference in the total number of deaths in a crisis compared with those expected under normal conditions. By these criteria, China's new method of tallying COVID deaths that excludes underlying diseases would make it difficult to compare fatalities with other countries. The surge in COVID cases and deaths has also created challenges and uncertainties for foreign businesses and workers in China. Many foreign companies rely on China as a key market and a source of supply chains. But they have faced disruptions due to travel restrictions, testing requirements, quarantine rules, and labor shortages. Some foreign workers have also decided to leave China due to health concerns and difficulties in obtaining visas. China's sudden relaxation of its COVID restrictions has been a risky gamble that has backfired so far. The country is now facing a humanitarian crisis and an economic slowdown that could have global repercussions. The question is whether China can contain the virus without resorting to another lockdown or whether it will have to pay a higher price for its policy change.